What is going on guys, this is your boy Astrum Sensei and welcome to my very first Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. I know that sounds crazy, but last night Epic Games has released Unreal Engine 5 as an early access. They decided that, you know, they're just gonna let us try it and see. They did say that this one is not for production quality, however, this is what Unreal Engine will be like from now on. So I decided that I'm gonna be starting a brand new tutorial series for Unreal Engine 5 to, you know, teach and and explore how it's different from Unreal Engine 4 for those who used Unreal Engine 4 and for those who are beginners and never touched Unreal Engine they will also learn something from this series so basically we're gonna explore all of the new features and compare them to the old features and we are gonna be learning everything from scratch so in this video we are going to be exploring the basic user interface and how to create a brand new project. We are going to check out all of the differences and basically try out everything we can. So yeah, let's not waste too much time, but before we go, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you are new to the channel for more Unreal Engine tutorials. And yeah, let us start. So I'm gonna start by opening up the engine. I know, rocket science. But hey, we have this brand new screen and it looks gorgeous, can you believe that? And we have the recent projects. Most of them are from Unreal Engine 4. You can actually open Unreal Engine 4 projects in Unreal Engine 5. That is amazing. I'm probably gonna transfer all of my games. So other than recent projects, we can go to choose between games, film and video events, architecture, automotive and product design. But we are all here for games, let's face it. So I'm just gonna choose games and we have all of the templates that we love and adore from Unreal Engine 4. However, the 2D templates are no longer here. I did try adding 2D assets and it seems to work just the same. My 2D project is probably gonna work here and I might do 2D tutorials because, you know, it's kind of underappreciated in the Unreal Engine community. However, I feel like there being no templates is a statement that says this engine isn't for 2D games, but I'm still gonna make one in it, so guys don't worry, you can just use it if you want. So yeah, we have all of the templates, I'm gonna go with third person, and we are gonna go with blueprints, desktop, quality preset maximum, starter content true, and we don't need a project name. I'm gonna click create and that should create our new project and I noticed that Unreal Engine 5 is actually faster than Unreal Engine 4 despite the fact that my PC isn't that like it's great but it's not the best PC in the world. I think Unreal Engine 5 is even faster than Unreal Engine 4. I don't know how they did that. So anyway we have the project and project file is out of date. Would you like to update it? I'm just gonna click on update. I don't know why this shows up on all of my projects. The first thing I like to do when I open a brand new project is hit that play button to check it out and we are playing the game and this game is running on Unreal Engine 5, that is crazy. So I'm gonna close it and if you actually go to the uh, these things, you can see that we have all of the same play settings in the engine. So for example, you can play it in the new editor window and that should open it in a separate window. You know, it's basically all of, the sa all of it the same. And if you are new to the, both engines, just, you know, this is where you choose how you play your game. So yeah, the play button is still the same, it just looks a little bit different. So I'm gonna tell you the main things that, you know, Epic Games had in mind when they made this version of the engine. What they wanted is they wanted to put the entire focus on the viewport and that is why everything is basically dockable so that it doesn't get in your way. For example, the content browser, you can just open it and it closes when you are not using it. We have the details panel, it also opens and closes, the world outliner. It's just rocket science, it's amazing. Everything is smaller and more streamlined and not everything is colorful anymore and that is great to be honest, it just doesn't get in, your, in the way. Even all of those, everything is blue. But yeah, we should just take it slow. I don't know why I'm just getting so excited about this and talking too much. So first of all, we are gonna go to the content button over here and we have some options. We have the content browser. You can open four content browsers. Let's actually try one of them. So we have the content browser and it opens a brand new window. Oh my God, guys, what happened to the old content browser? Well, basically it's now called the content drawer. So this is the content drawer. You just open it and close it over here. 
and you actually cannot keep it docked or you can just dock it in layout and it'll be the content browser but we don't want that so i'm just gonna close it and it will still be the content drawer and you can open separate content browser if that's your thing but hey that's just not good so yeah the content drawer is amazing basically it just lets you quickly grab stuff for example if we go to starter content props and we have some models here you can just drag stuff and place them and it closes by itself so that it gives you the chance to you know organize your stuff and make your level look gorgeous so yeah this is the content drawer it's basically the content browser you still have the ad stuff you can do everything and when you need it to stay open you can just dock it in the layout and it'll be the content browser and you can close it and it's just not gone forever and you don't know how to bring it back so yeah this is like super intuitive I love it. Next up in the content button over here, we have the marketplace and the quick sell bridge. So if we press on the quick sell bridge, it should open this brand new window. And over here, you know, you, you have a lot of assets, 15,231 assets, which are free from quick sell to us. I know it's a blessing, but if you open one of them, for example, you can actually sign in and download it for free. and the the amazing thing is that you can actually drag it and drop it into your game and it just for example this chair you can just drag it this one i actually downloaded it before you don't need to do anything special to download it you just sign in with your epic games account and then you drag it and drop it into the game and when you go back into the game it should actually be there yeah there it is and if you press n to put it on the floor it's actually there can you believe that you don't need to import or anything or add it from the you know launcher it just from the quick sell bridge it just goes straight into your game and you can just you know in the content drawer organize it it actually puts it in the mega scans folder and it's really organized so you don't need to do anything but yeah this quick sell bridge thing is my favorite feature in the engine right now and i really hope they expand on it and keep adding assets because this is just a blessing anyway let us close it and go to the next button which is the create button now this one is actually instead of the place actors tab that was over here in the unreal engine 4 which allows you to add point lights shapes cinematic actors visual effects volumes classes you know uh, bsp brushes all of that stuff box triggers player starts all of that stuff has been moved here however if you want to bring back that old actors panel you can just press on this button which says place actors panel and that should bring it over here and it will be placed in the side over here you can just restore it to keep it if you want it like the old version or you can just right click and move it to the sidebar and it'll be just like the content drawer you can for example grab a point light and it will be here and the place actors will be docked again this is just amazing honestly next up we are going to take a look at the modes over here we did have a few buttons at the top in unreal engine 4 where you know they cycle between all of the game modes or the creation modes for the level design for example landscape mode which allows you to, to create a landscape then terrain mode or foliage editing which adds you know trees and stuff mesh painting and this one is new it wasn't actually there in unreal engine 4 which is fracture editing mode i haven't used it yet so i can't wait to try it out next up we have brush editing mode which we don't use too much so yeah i'm just gonna go back to editing mode and you can see that you know it's just so streamlined right now and not complicated so next up we should check out the world outliner and the details panel now if you press on them it should just undock them like this and that looks just amazing you can just go to the details panel and play with your settings and then when you go out it just closes by itself and the same for the world outliner which shows you all of this stuff in your level you can just choose something then go back here and move it if you want to move it and it will just close by itself and that is genius however if you would like it to be like the old version you can just right click and restore tab and then do the same for the details panel and it'll be just like the old one however i don't think anyone wants that so i'm just gonna move them to the sidebar 
and this is just amazing they are docked next up the settings button we have the settings over here world settings project settings all of that stuff same stuff as unreal engine 4 but it's no longer disorganized so for example if we go to the world settings it should open it here and i like to keep it next to the details panel so i'm just gonna right click on it and move it to the sidebar and now we have the world settings over here which you know allows you to choose the game mode and all of that stuff next up i want to show you a brand new feature that is amazing in this engine which is in the details panel we now have favorite properties for example if one of your favorite properties for this chair is the, uh, for example, mass in kilograms or the simulate physics. Yeah, let's do the simulate physics. Oh, it doesn't let us. Why is that? For example, enable gravity. This is one of your favorite features to mess around with. So you can just right click and add it to the favorites. And when you press on the favorites, toggle favorites, it should put them on the top. So for example, if we add this static mesh to the favorites, it should add it to the favorite settings. For example, visible, add it to the favorites and it should place it there. And this is just amazing because, you know, I get lost over here looking for stuff all the time. So having to put them in favorites, it's just a blessing. And if you want to remove them from favorites, you can just right click and remove them from favorites and that should do it. So one more thing we are going to explore in this video is the theme settings for the engine. For example, you want to change some colors over here in your game. So if you press the edit button, you can go to the editor preferences and over here we have the active theme. We only have dark right now but we can add a th new theme or we can just duplicate it if we want. So I'm gonna duplicate it. And for example, you can just change all of the colors in your game or in your engine. So you just, you know, make it red, for example, the black and the background, you can just make it blue. And that should just, you know, it's it just makes it whatever colors you want. And that is just revolutionary. As you can see, I'm already making a mess out of this and I'm just loving it. I can just color it whatever I want. I can, you know, add the atmosphere of my game, for example, to make it more exciting to work on the game. Or, you know, I just can add colors that I feel comfortable with. So this is just amazing. And if you save it, you can just swap between all of the versions and I can't tell you how much I appreciate this. <laughs> Look at this. It just lets you color the entire thing. I mean, these guys who are making this stuff are genius. But for now, I'm just gonna stick with the dark version because I don't wanna like hurt your eyes. You know, guys, I still haven't explored everything new in the engine. So this is it for this video. I will be making more videos and I want to try to go more in depth for beginners and even guys who are just moving from Unreal Engine 4 to 5. And of course, we are going to be exploring the new blueprint. They did change some stuff and I'm quite worried about that. You know, I don't want to lose my knowledge. This is it for my first Unreal Engine 5 video. I really hope like I didn't talk too much and make a mess out of everything. I tried to be less excited than I am so that I don't add too much stuff into the video and make it too complicated but yeah we just checked out everything and I really hope you guys are looking forward to the next video so yeah I really hope you guys enjoyed watching please don't forget to leave a like so that you can support this series and this entire channel and subscribe if you are new and you want to see more Unreal Engine 5 tutorials and yeah I'll see you next time take care have a great day and bye